Good afternoon, Saints. Welcome to Helen class. Uh, last time we gathered together, we really went into uh, the sicknesses that we were redeemed from the curse of the law, that Jesus redeemed us from. He took it on himself. Amen. Amen. Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its law being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you will fellow our hearts and fellow our minds and so that we can hear from you tonight. We ask that you will forgive us for our sins. I know I probably, well, I know I did say some things I shouldn't have said. And I know I'm supposed to love my enemies and pray for them, you know, that persecute us and do things against us. Lord, we thank you for the forgiveness of our sins, that we can come to you boldly and say, Lord, thank you for forgiving us for our sins and ask for specific forgiveness that we have done as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lord, we pray that you will lead and guide us by your Holy Spirit here tonight and say what you would have us to say. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. We're in Galatians, the third chapter. Get a sense time to turn there. Uh, you know, I really got blessed last week by going over all the uh, curses of the sickness in Deuteronomy 28th chapter. Um, it really blessed me and opened my eyes. And there was other things that we talked about, too. How we, Christ has uh, made us righteous. Right, yeah. Nothing we blood, did. He nothing. made us right. Right. All we had to do is accept him as our Lord and Savior. And, you know, when you run around and say, well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace, that's not good. No, All right. that Christ has redeemed you from. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look at that. Um, well, we start with Galatians. You there yet? I don't want to start reading and everybody's not there yet. Can I get an amen when you get there or mm -hmm. hallelujah? Amen. hallelujah? Okay, we want to start at the sixth verse of Galatians, the third chapter. I'm reading out of King James. It says, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness just by believing God. That's where he got his righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. We are the ones of faith, right? Amen. We're of faith. The scriptures, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then, they which are of faith are blessed with faith of Abraham. Amen? Amen. Now, this first chapter of Galatians was talking about uh, Paul didn't get this revelation here from man. He got it from Jesus Christ. Remember we talked about that last week? Yes. And he was saying uh, in that first chapter of Galatians, he said... Um, the seventh verse, well, let's start at the sixth verse. He said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ to another gospel. So they must have not been preaching the gospel Paul was preaching. Yeah. Amen. Because he was That's preaching true. about the blessing. Right. That was the gospel. And then he says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you 
and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. Pervert, that means twist the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. Like uh, a lot of people, we read that last week in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, that he died for our sins according to the scripture and was buried and rose the third day according to the scripture. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of good church going people believe that is the gospel. But Paul says here in this third chapter, it would be masquerading as some teeth. Um, the gospel of Abraham saying, I'm going to read the eighth verse. It says, And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. And then it says, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Now, if you jump down to the 13th verse, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So if you're preaching the gospel, you should be preaching about the blessing, the good news. It's supposed it to be is, good, news. It is good news. It's not it's just blessing. that you little sinner, you need to straighten up and act right or you're going to go to hell. That's not the gospel. The gospel is about the blessings the Beatitudes, I looked that up, and that's about the blessings it's too. about the blessings. <laughs> yeah, the blessings. So, praise God. We're supposed to be teaching and preaching about the blessing. The goodness of God. It's the goodness of God that leads a person to repentance. Right. It says it's, it's the love of God does that. The Holy Make Spirit, people, it quickens them. It's shed abroad in your heart. Right, and it guides them into doing the right thing. Right. Now, we know a lot of well-known denominations, they change the gospel every couple of years, what they're preaching. These are well-known denominations. As I said, some people are masquerading as teachers. What verse is that, honey? Uh, the seventh verse in the first chapter. Of the read, it, read it out, Amplified. It says, um, I should read six with it. It said, I am astonished and extremely irritated that you are so quickly shifting your alliance and deserting him who called you by grace of Christ for a different, even contrary gospel, mm. which is not really another gospel, but there is obviously some people masquerading as teachers who are disturbing and confusing you with a misleading counterfeit teaching. And, so, oh, and, go ahead. You, and you want to distort and want to distort the gospel of Christ, twisting it into something that absolutely is not. So That's they twist happened. the gospel into something that is, is absolutely not. not. Now, if Paul in Galatians is saying that the gospel is about the blessing and right. what you've been redeemed from, right. the blessing, you get the blessing. Once you've been redeemed from the curse of the law, mm -hmm. you're blessed like Abraham. Abraham right. was blessed. Now, when Abraham had the gospel preached to him about the blessing, Mm -hmm. It was before the law. Right. It was he didn't he didn't have it. It was before the law. It was before the law. It was um, way before the law. Right. I think um, I was reading through God the rest of the book of Galatians and it was saying um, it was so many years. Um that the law even came after Abraham. And here's something else I saw. When we was reading the third chapter of Galatians, 
the first verse, the third chapter, the first verse, he said, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth crucified among you. This only would I learn of you, receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. It wasn't by the works of the law. No, it wasn't. It was by the hearing of faith, right? Right, it's the same now. And it's the by same faith. now. You don't get you can't work your saved way into this. by the works mm -hmm. of the law. You get saved by faith, believing. Right. It said yeah. Abraham believed God, and it was accounted right. unto him for righteousness, yeah. right? Right, even though a lot of churches, they try to manipulate you and say, if, if you're not doing this or you're not doing that. And you, you call yourself a Christian. But it's not by the works of I law. I know it, but they're trying to do that. To have you it's by the hearing of faith. Work yourself to death. It'll make, they'll make you neglect your family. Well, there is a verse in Romans, the 15th chapter. If you do a, a, a search in your concordance under the gospel, okay, so all the verses in the Bible will pop up about the gospel. This one uh, caught my eye, Romans, the 15th chapter. And this is the same man that penned Galatians, Paul, he penned it in Romans. And, uh, you know, in that first chapter, he said he wasn't ashamed of the gospel. No, he's not ashamed of oh, Christ. He, he preached it. They thought he was a madman. Um, Romans 15, 29 says, And I am sure that when I come unto you, I should come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. How does that read out Amplified? I know that when I do come to you, I will come in the abundant blessing of Christ. Now, the Lord opened my eyes and he showed me something this week and when I was meditating on this. Um, Mark, uh, Matthew, the fourth chapter. I said, you know, thank you, Lord. I didn't see that before. What well, didn't click, I'll put it like that. Mm -hmm. Because we only know in part. And you know, if you walk in the light that you have, the Lord will give you more light. That's what he does. But, if you, you know, he also says if you don't use what he give you, he'll take it away from you. Yeah, he does say that too. Mm -hmm. Now, and here in Matthew, the fourth chapter, the 23rd verse, it says, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel. Right, the good news. Of the kingdom, mm -hmm. and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease right. among the people. Right. Now how does it read out of the Amplified? It says, and he went throughout all the Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news, the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people, demonstrating and revealing that he was indeed the promised Messiah. So he, Jesus preached the gospel way before he died on the cross. Right. That's the good, the good news. <laughs> See, the thing of it is, and what was so he doing? He, he was, was preaching the good news. So, so what him. I'm saying, the gospel is more than his death, burial, and resurrection. Of course it is. It's about the blessing, the good news. The good news is you've been redeemed from the curse of the law. And you've was, been redeemed from sickness. Right, and he was preaching. Redeemed. And he was, he uh, when he was came. preaching and teaching, he was healing. That's why he don't want nobody sick. Nobody's sick among you. He was healing right. those with diseases and he now, was every kind of sickness. If you go to Luke, the fourth chapter, Which he it, it really, you know, Luke, 
you really did a self e e examination on what was really going on in, right. in this, uh, in the, you know, as far as the gospel. And Luke, the fourth chapter, and plus Luke is a gospel to the Gentiles. He says here in Luke 4.18, this is what Jesus, we should go right up uh, uh, to the 16th chapter. Well, actually, I'm going to start at the 14th verse. It says, uh, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the reasons round about. And he taught in their synagogues and glorified all. So he was teaching. Right. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Elijah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. He just didn't start anyway. He found the place. Right. And, he, and it's, it said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, see, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering the sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say this day, is the scripture fulfilled in your ears? Mm -hmm. So he, that's the good news. You see, he preached the gospel to the poor. What's good news to the poor? You don't have to be poor no more. Right. Did you know that you became poor <laughs> so we can You don't have to be poor no more. And he, uh, and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That means that you can be healed. And, and plus he was letting them know you can be pardoned and forgiven. For and you can be delivered. Yeah. And you can have your sight recovered. You can be set at liberty. Right. That's the good news. That's that's part of the blessing. That's part of what he redeemed us. And then, all that's under the curse. All right. That. And he was setting the press free. Right. And you know, as I researched this on down, in Matthew, the 24th chapter, you know, the Lord can start porting out things to you. Matthew 24, 14, this was his disciples asking what would an end come and all of this. Matter of fact, it starts at the third verse. Uh, well, it actually starts at the first verse. Mm -hmm. One other third verse. It says, As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when should these things be, and what should be the signs of thy coming, and of the end of the world? They wanted to know. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to jump down to verse 14. Verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then should the end come. Now, the gospel that Paul was preaching was about the blessing, about you can be healed, you can be delivered, you can have your eyes open, you can be set at liberty. That's the, that's the good news because he got astray from Jesus, and right? You can be and that's what Jesus was preaching, the that's good news. Thing. And healing people. Right. Amen? And preaching forgiveness. That that explains why the, um, the end of the world haven't came yet. Right. <laughs> because the gospel hasn't been preached in all the world yet. I mean, you have heard different versions of the gospel. Like Paul said, it's a perverted gospel. It's a twisted gospel. 
And if uh, an angel from heaven comes down and preaches any other gospel and what we have preached unto you, let him be accursed, condemned to destruction. That's pretty strong, ain't it? Amen. That's strong. Right, yeah. And that's what we're saying tonight. If somebody's been preaching any other gospel unto you, then the blessing and the good news that you can be rich, you can be prosperous, you can be healed, you can be delivered, you can be set free, your blind eyes can be opened so that you can see the glorious light. They're not preaching the gospel. No. Well, you know, some people say, well, this is a new generation, Brother Carter. Uh, you know, you be talking about, you know, the blood of Jesus, which washes away our sins. That's offensive to people. Well, Jesus was preaching about, unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh. But he was talking spiritually. That that made a whole lot of his because disciples turn and not follow him anymore. They did not understand spiritually. They were not spiritual. But what I found out about the Lord, when he says something to you, and you don't understand what he's saying, you have to tell yourself, well, wait a minute, he ain't told me nothing wrong yet. There's got to <laughs> be more to this. So you keep listening to him. And then, like the disciples, they came to him privately, and asked him what did it mean. You can go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I, I believe what you're telling me, but I just I just need it made clear to me. But you, you know when they back Can in, you give me clarity? Right. Back in the day when they and were will. burning at the altar, they actually would sprinkle people with the blood. They sure did. They they put the blood on them. And uh, many times they, they uh, had as many as a hundred calves and a hundred cattle and so many hundreds of rams. Because they would do it, they didn't do it every day. They had certain times of the year that they would go and, and uh, the priest would have to, you know, sacrifice all these mm -hmm. animals. They had to make atonement. Okay. But what, what was so good about God with Jesus, if you did certain things that were real bad, there was no atonement for you. Mm. You just had to get out of the camp and not come back no more. Uh, if you if you were working on the Sabbath day, there was no forgiveness. You were stoned to death. Yeah, there that's under no the law. Forgiveness, and that's so under the law. What, what? But he redeemed us. He from redeemed the curse us of the law. from that. They would actually. Yeah, we don't have to go through that for a whole lot of things. You just get killed. Now I got Matthew twenty six. Wasn't no, I'm sorry. 13 in my notes. And I guess they carry rocks and bricks in their pockets. And Jesus <laughs> said, when you preach this good news about, you know, how you can be blessed, how you can be healed, how you can be delivered, how you can be set at liberty, your eyes can be open. You know, you, you just be blessed. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the blessing of Abraham. That means Abraham was rich in material things, too. Right. He had plenty. He had plenty of servants. He, he had, had camels a, he had an army, and cattle. Mm -hmm. Flocks. He was blessed. Now, here in uh, Matthew 26, 13, it says, Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel should be preached in the whole world, there should also this that this woman has done be told as a memorial of her. Right. What did this woman do? It actually starts at you the sixth verse. And she took Read she down had. from uh, the sixth verse to verse 13. I see it now. now when Jesus was back in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an a bastard, alabaster vow of expensive perfume. And that perfume was very, very expensive. It was... Uh, well, we need to just read this on down because we right, got, okay. got to get out of here tonight. Well, I got a lot to, go, and she poured to put it, in. She poured it on Lord's Jesus' willing. head as he reclined at the table. 
Well, I was just saying that because yeah, why yeah. they was acting so silly about it. it was yeah, it's worth a lot of money. But when the disciples saw it, they were indignant and angry, saying, why all, why all this waste of money? For this perfume might have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of the uh, malice of this remark, said to them, see, it was more than one of them saying, mm -hmm. why are you bothering the woman? She has done a good thing to me. For you will always have a poor with you, but you will not always have me. And when she poured the perfume on my, when she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I assure you, I most solemnly say to you, whatever, wherever this gospel of salvation is preached in the world, what this woman has done will always be told in memory of her. For her act of love and devotion. Isn't that something? Because it was an act of love and devotion. You find this through the Gospels. And, and that's what you mean by devotion. We so, to devote ourselves to the Christ. Paul was saying the Gospel is about the blessing. Mm -hmm. And when we was in Deuteronomy 28th chapter, it was all about bless, 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 mm -hmm. bless, bless. And we are a child of God. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law, right? Amen. True? Yes. We're blessed. And we want other people to hear the good news. We want them to hear the full gospel. And God wants Not a perverted God or twisted the whole, gospel. The whole thing. But they need to hear the, the whole gospel. Right, the whole gospel. Like it says in Galatians, the whole gospel is the blessing. It's about the blessing. It's about God's good. God is good. Amen? Amen. He is good. That's what it, it uh, let me turn to Galatians, the third chapter here real quick. It says, um, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree. So everything under the curse of the law, he became a curse for us. He took it. He redeemed us. He bought us back. Amen? Amen. And it says that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, we've been teaching on healing for quite a while. I believe that God is my healer. I mean, he has he demonstrated is. in my life. He is. He's the only one. But, you know, you hear people say, I hear what you're saying, Brother Carter. You, you give me all these scriptures, you know, about the woman that was healed of an issue of blood and how this one man that was let down through the roof mm -hmm. And Jesus saw their faith, and yeah, you know he was healed. Yeah, and cool. you know how the the centurion servant was healed, and you know healing, 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 healing. I, you know, and and God is but one thing I can't understand, Brother Carter, that I know this woman; she was a good Christian. I mean, she went to church every Sunday. She was a, you know, Bible study. Mm -hmm. she, she did good with people. She fed, you know, the hungry. And she, you know, she gave to the poor. She tied, she, you know, done all this stuff. But she was sick all her life. She couldn't get her healing. Can you tell me why she couldn't get her healing? Well, it tells you here in Galatians, the first chapter. Now listen to this real closely, children. Oh, no, it's not the first chapter. It's the third chapter. He says, the third chapter, the second verse, he says, This would I learn of you, receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So how do you, do you, do you receive your healing 
By your good works? No. no not by your works. See, a lot of people think that they are entitled to a healing by their good works. Um, what does your second verse say? On it yours? says, this is all I want to ask of you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as a result of obeying the requirements of the law? Or was it the result of hearing the message of salvation with faith, believing in it? Right, believing in it. So, this is how some people are healed and some people are not. Right. Some and people believe faith. that they are healed entitled to a healing because of their good works mm -hmm. and they never get a healing. Right. Other people just have faith, believe. Right. They the do. same way they got say, uh, saved. They, they heard something, they believed it in their heart and they confessed it with their mouth. That's the way healing works. Mm -hmm. You believe that Jesus is your healer. And you believe that he has redeemed you from the curse of the law. You believe that his sins has washed away all your sins. His blood has washed away all your sins. You believe that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You're that's, that's all by faith. Right? Right. You have so believe. what he says, if, if you believe and have faith in God, you can go boldly to the throne. You can. Of mercy and ask for healing. Right? Yeah, because you believe. It ain't based on your works. None of that. It's based on your believing, your faith in and God. Can I tell you something? The, the people who know it's not based on our work. That's why they just fall down at, at his feet. Because they know they have That's what the blind good. man we said. Know um, not no good. Son of David, have mercy and on we me. Are, we are at his mercy. And we know And he said, do you believe that I can do this? They say, yeah. yes, Lord. And he said, well, according to your faith, be it unto you. You, you know, all and that's, that's how you get your healings, children. But you if you pay it. attention to this, you can, you can receive your healing today. Right. You don't have to be sick. No. You, you don't have to be holding on to that sickness and thinking that you have to do something in order to get your healing. You have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Right. And you know, you can, it can be things wrong with you that you don't even know about. Well, it's like this. It's that. How do we know, like if we went out to preach the gospel, how would we know where to go preach the gospel? The Holy Spirit will tell us. Well, amen. That's our, that's our next subject we're going to touch on here tonight. Go to Acts, the 20th chapter. You know, because he, you would know by the discernment he gives us. Here's what Paul and his uh, group did. In Acts? Acts, the 20th chapter. Yeah, you know. Uh, the 24th verse. Well, that's another one. Uh, excuse me, Acts the 16th chapter. This is all through the book of Acts. This, this is the history of the church. Right. We're part of this church, so we should be Let's acting see. the same way. Right, it's important. Acts the 16th chapter. Give me verses um, 1 through 10. Now, Paul traveled to Derby and also to Lust. Lustra. A disciple named Timothy was there, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer in Christ. However, his father was Greek. Amen. Timothy was well spoken by the brothers and sisters who were in Lustra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to go with him as a missionary, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places since they knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decrees decided on by the apostles and the elders who were in Jerusalem for the churches to observe. So the churches were strengthened in faith and they continually increased in number day by day. Mm -hmm. Now they passed through the territory of Viagra uh, into Galata 
And after be, being forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in the West Coast province, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit forbade him. Forbade him. Okay. He told him, don't to go there. The See, the, a lot of times we want to preach the gospel in Holy different Spirit. places, and the Holy Spirit said, nope, don't go there. Yeah, it said it. Okay, let's read in on the down West, here. West Coast province of Asia Minor. Mm -hmm. And they, after they came into Mysia, Mysia, they tried to go into Bethnia. But the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. The Spirit told them, don't go so there. Passing by Mysia, they went to Troas. Amen. And then a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man from the Roman province, Macedonia, was standing and pleading with him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Mm -hmm. And when he had seen the vision, we, including Luke, tried to go on to Macedonia at once, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. That's how you know. The Holy Spirit, you got to be completely led by the Holy Spirit in everything that you do. That's the only Because way. there's a lot of things we want to do, and if you really are listening to the Spirit of God, He said, don't do that. That's the only way I'm going to be led. But you don't do be, that. You may be going into a trap. Okay. Now, Paul in the 20th chapter of Acts says something very interesting. Verse uh, the twenty twenty four he write, he writes this is Luke wrote the book of Acts too mm -hmm. he said but none of these things move me neither I count my life unto I none of these things move me neither count I my life dear unto me so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. The gospel is the grace of God. It is. That's what the gospel is. You know, you don't hear this kind of stuff in no, church. No, you don't, because they just say the gospel you know, is the death of the world. They the just say, well, the, you know, and, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, I have people confront me on this, and they say, well, we don't believe in that prosperity and that, uh, you know, speaking in tongues and uh, being filled with the Spirit and, all, and, you know, and healing and all that stuff. We just preach the gospel. Yeah, but they know. I'm saying, well, wait a minute. You must be preaching a perverted gospel, mm -hmm. a twisted gospel, mm -hmm. because that's not the gospel we just got to read about, is it? Right, no. The gospel is the blessing. It's the blessing. The, blood, the gospel is you can be healed. Mm -hmm. If you're Paul, you don't have to be Paul no more. Right. <laughs> you can be delivered from anything right. in your life. You can be set at liberty. And they, they your blind them. eyes can be opened. That's your spiritual eyes can be opened. And they preaching you got to do this and this to be saved. You know, they, you're they, not they, doing most that. Most time not what they're preaching, they're preaching about works. Right. You got to do you some work. works. They want you to work. To show their, you want, they want you to work to show their self approved to them. Right. You know, if you come but and do this and do that. It's all you. about faith. Yeah. Believing. Same. It's all about having faith in what God said. And the spirit. Look at verses. 3 2 in Galatians. Is who leads you. Here's what Paul writes. That's what I, I won't do anything else to spirit. I mean, there's so much in the book of Galatians and in the Word of God you can never exhaust it. Mean, the Spirit told me one day, that's a quick testimony, not to go in the store. I went in it anyway, and the man pulled a gun. I was there wanting to hide, and he said, Come on out anyway. And I stood there and I prayed. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. I'll, next time I'm not going to disobey you. <laughs> and the man, uh, he didn't have a mask on, he had an automatic, and he had all of us pinned up. He said, you open up that safe and give me the money to the manager, then I, I won't hurt nobody. And I was just praying, and uh, he got the money and left. 
I said, Lord, I'm, I'm going to listen to you for now. Well, I've had too many, too many occasions when the Holy Spirit had told me something. Well, you but saw I listen that now. Um, I listened now. In the 16th chapter of Acts, Paul and his group wanted to do something, and the Holy Spirit said no. He told me And he obeyed the Holy Spirit. Well, I didn't obey. And Paul, <laughs> when he got a vision from the mm -hmm. Lord, I went on anyway. and the Lord told him where to go, mm -hmm. then he was sure that that's where he wanted yeah. him to go. Amen. So yeah. if you look at that second verse of the third chapter of Galatians again, it says, This only would I learn of you, receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Now, we know again. that we receive the Spirit right. by the hearing of faith. Yes, yeah, by hearing. And then in that sixth verse, it says, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. You got to believe. You do have to believe. Amen. He is not playing. Now, with all the prophets, well, there is a verse that I wrote down. Now, which verse and, did um, you read just now? I just read verse uh, 2 and 6. Okay, I thought that's what you read. Now, so I'm making sure. A lot of denominations. Believe that you have to tarry in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, you have to tarry and wait on them or do certain things. Oh, you have to do what they ask. But where they got that from was Luke, the 24th chapter. This brother Luke wrote this. That's the same thing. Um, we found out that these uh, Gentiles that Peter preached to, that the Holy Spirit fell on them right. the same way it fell on the, the uh, from them at the beginning. Now, here in the twenty fourth chapter of Luke. Yeah, that's, that's the last book. Yeah. They pick this up from here. Uh, 2449, it says, And behold, I send the promise of the Father unto you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until, until you be endured with power from high. Fully equipped. Well, read on that thought. Listen carefully. I am sending the promise of my Father the Holy Spirit upon you, but you are to remain in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed, fully equipped with the power of on high. And they followed his instructions. Yes, they did. So in the second chapter of Acts, it says, the first verse, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared upon them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the them other This mm -hmm. is the second, second chapter, chapter of Acts. Verse. One, one through four. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So, the reason they had to wait on the Holy Spirit and tarry for the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit hadn't entered into Earth's atmosphere, right? Well, it was in some some. Well, Jesus said, "Receive the Holy Spirit" right. in the Book of John. Right. They were in but some. we're talking about being filled with the Holy right. Spirit right. and speaking in other tongues. Now, a lot of people don't believe this. You know, I didn't believe it. I came out of a Baptist denomination, and they don't believe in speaking in tongues. They don't believe in healing. They don't believe in prosperity. But bless their little heart, you know, I know God loves them. But it's a lot of things that they do know 
that other denominations don't. Right. And when we visit some of the Pentecostal denominations, we heard people speak in tongues, and it kind of tickled us. <laughs> See, they're going to lost their minds showing up around here. What they're going to do next? Start uh, walking the back of the bench or whatever. But what I did, I said, I need to see what the Word of God says about this. Right? Right. And when I started going through the Word of God, I found out that, yeah, that, that God has ordained us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to speak with other tongues. And it's not by your works. No, it's something that you, you, you receive. It's you by faith. It's by faith, right. It's by faith. You can pray in tongues, too. So... Go with me to the book of Ephesians. This helped me quite a bit. Because we talked about the 10th chapter of Acts when them Gentiles were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit fell on them and they spoke with other tongues. This is real. And one reason why a lot of people don't do as well as other Christians do because they receive everything that God has to give to them. If God said that you're supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, they, they receive that. If God said that you're supposed to be healed, by his stripes you are healed, they receive that. If Christ said he has redeemed you from the curse of the law, from all that sickness and being poor and all that, they receive that. If God said that he, he, his will for you is to be prosperous, to be successful in everything you do, they receive that, right? Right, receive it all. Oh, you want you want blessings. you want to receive the whole yes, gospel. Yes, so what what we're gonna do is look here through a book of Ephesians, starting at the first chapter. And we're gonna give you a summary of this, but we're gonna pick this back up. Because the promise is to us. That's what it said. Yes. Yeah, well, along with the blessing, it says you, in that 14th verse of three. 3.14 of Galatians, it says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So that's how you receive the Spirit. Now in Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 13 and 14, I'm going to give you a quick summary here. It says, uh, in the 13th verse, it says, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the honest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. I mean, they got it all in there, don't they? Yeah, they do. It's in here. The redemption. And then you go to the second chapter, verse 18. It says, um, For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Amen? Amen. And then verse 22 says, In whom you also are built together for an inhabitation of God through the Spirit. This is why you got so many people going all different kind of ways. It's, it, they're preaching all kinds of different Gospels. And, you know, they believe part of it and they don't believe this. And and this is why <coughs> even a saint, take we as <laughs> Christians and rest. saints mm -hmm. can't get together. Because you got one pastor believing this, another pastor believing this, and you, then you got another church that's ran by a group of elders, and they're changing pastors and changing the doctrine every two years. There is no, you won't see no point O2 version of the Bible. You know, what really kills me is when they say, take what pertains to you and leave the rest of the Right, take what pertains to you. 
Now, uh, in the third chapter, the 16th verse, it says um, that he would grant you according to your riches, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's how you get strength. By his we spirit. You in the third chapter. Third chapter. Thirteenth verse. No, we third should. chapter, sixteenth verse. Oh, All right. And then the fourth chapter, the thirtieth verse. This is just a summary. Y'all oh, go right. back and read all oh, these I chapters together, and you'll see oh, all right. this actually fits. It's like woven together. Mm -hmm. And then he says in the fourth chapter, the thirtieth verse, and greet not. The Holy Spirit of oh, God, whereby you are sealed unto that day of redemption. Right. What does grief be? What does yours say? Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but seek to please Him. In other words, you're going against Him. Mm -hmm. By whom you are, were sealed and marked, branded as God's own. For the day of redemption, the final deliverance from the consequences of sin. All right. Now, here's what 1 Peter says. Y'all should write that down. This 1 Peter 1, 22 to 25. You can read it when you get home. 1 Peter where, 1. Yes. First chapter, 1 Peter. 1, 22 and 25. Through 25. I'm going to read out of the King James and then you can read out Amplified. It says, verse 22, it says, See you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Unfeigned, what does that mean? Sincere. Real, Sincere. genuine right. faith, love of the brother. And see that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower therefore fadeth away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Give me them verses out of the Amplified. 22 through 24. And 25. Since by your obedience to the truth you have purified yourselves for a sincere love of the believers. See that you love one another from the heart, always unselfishly seeking the best for one another. For you have been born again, that is, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed and set apart for his purpose, not of the seed which is perishable, but from that which is imperishable mm -hmm. and immortal, that is through the living and everlasting word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word, the good news of salvation, which was preached to you. Amen. So in that 22nd verse, he says, See ye have purified your souls by obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned <coughs> love of the brethren. Unfeigned means sincere, genuine, real, true, honest, authentic love. Mm -hmm. So as there's unfeigned, there is fame. Fame means to pretend, counterfeit. Fake. Mm -hmm. A fake love. Right. A counterfeit love. Yeah. A pretend love. <laughs> Amen. Perpetrating a fraud. <laughs> so I have something wrote down here about. And which, which word is that at in here? 
that you just read. That's verse 22, where it says, in the Amplified, it says, sincere love. Mm -hmm. And the King James, it says, unfeigned. Mm -hmm. So, if there is sincere love, there is fake love. Yeah. Amen. This is not my word, children. This is God's word. So, fame means to give a false appearance, <coughs> pretend, speak and act as to make it appear that something is the case when in fact it is not. You mean like the devil when he appears like an angel of light? So, children, you got to pay attention to yourself. We're going to stop right there because there's so much that the Lord wants to tell you about his goodness. Amen. And once you know about the goodness of God, I mean, I can tell you and tell you and tell you. You can take notes. You can read the scriptures. Amen. But until you start walking by faith, if you paid attention to, if you've been following us on YouTube and you pay attention to our videos, you know that we have been teaching on authentic faith. And we saw that there is pretend faith. We saw that there is arrogant faith, right. egotistical faith. We saw that there was unsupported faith. Yeah. And we stop off where there is dead faith. That's right. And I asked you Saturday, um, last Saturday past to give me a chance to tell you about, explain to you about loving your enemies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which we'll pick up Saturday. But right here he says that the spirit unto, it says, seeing that you have purified your souls, that's your mind, in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart. That's right. We're going to start right there. That's, right. That's the gospel. Seeking the best for one another. The gospel is the blessing about the blessing Amen. about you being prosperous, about you being delivered, Amen. about you being healed. We saw that in the 14th chapter of Acts in one of our healing class that Paul right. preached the gospel. Mm -hmm. And there was a crippled man sitting there from birth. And the crippled man heard the gospel. Right. See, you can't, you can't get no healing by somebody saying, well, you know, God uh, don't heal anymore. When the last apostle died, that was done away with. And, you know, you never know what God is going to do. And, you know, uh, no, you got to have faith. That it is God's will for you to be healed. Faith. And you, and by faith, not by your good works, no, your no, good no, works are not going to get you healed. And if you're saying, running around here thinking that you that. are entitled to a healing by what you are doing in church, and how many times you go to church, and how many, you know, you know how many, how long you pray, and all of that. It's not based on it. It's a based on faith by the hearing of God, right. the hearing of faith. God may be looking at you and say, I didn't tell that, that person to do any of that stuff. I wanted them to do this, and they didn't do anything. Well, just not obedient at all. If you don't. That's for sure. Show now, somebody, most people do believe God. that Christ can save them. They have, you know, believed in their heart and confessed mm -hmm. that with their mouth without a doubt. And they, they're saved. And they did receive the Holy Ghost when they got saved. But they haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit yet. Some of them don't know they even have the Holy Spirit. Well, you know, the ones down there in uh, Ephesus didn't know that they had the they Holy Spirit. They be quenching the Holy right. Spirit. But we're going to get into this, children. I mean, um, you can't say everything in one session. No, you can't. But that's enough right there for you to meditate on. You search it out for yourself. Yeah. I mean, I gave you a lot of scriptures. Read that whole chapter. Read that whole passage where those scriptures came from. And you'll see that God is true. And pray before you read. 
ask the Holy Spirit to come. You ask him to open your eyes. Open your eyes and your ears so you can hear him. We got to get out of here. We're glad that you are viewed this video and I hope it helps you. Uh, meditate on them things that we said. Amen. And we'll see you the next time. You be blessed.